Lesson 6.6, .6, the last lesson in Chapter 6, and we are going to be performing transformations on the coordinate plane. Now, we did this in a previous chapter when we were talking about reflections and rotations and translations, but in this one we're going to focus primarily on dilations. All right? It's what Lesson 6.2 is about, remember? We talked about two different types of dilations, enlargements and reductions. And we dealt with a couple other terms you need to understand, scale factor and center of dilation. So let's review those real quick. By the way, this is going to be two different videos for Lesson 6. First video, I'm just going to walk through these terms. I'm going to do one example for you. And then in the second video, I'm going to talk about a shortcut for that one example. So make sure you watch the second video. And then we're going to do a couple other examples. And the last example, the fourth one, uh, is going to be a slightly harder one because the center of dilation is going to be in an unusual spot. Okay, so make sure you watch both videos. All right, let's start here with scale factor. Remember, we called scale factor k, All right? And the way we found k was we did new over old, or what we often call the image over the pre image. Okay, so a little review there. An enlargement meant that our shape got bigger. What about K? You guys remember what was true about K with an enlargement? K was greater than one. Okay. Reduction. K was less than one, but we also said it was greater than what number? It's greater than zero. If you multiply everything by zero, you don't have anything left, so that doesn't make sense. And if you multiply by a negative, we get negative distances, which doesn't really make sense either. Okay, the center of dilation, remember, was where if we connected the vertices, all of those little lines we drew would intersect at a single point, and that was the center of our dilation. Important concept for this lesson, unless I tell you otherwise, unless the book tells you otherwise, the center of dilation that you're going to use is going to be at zero, zero. Okay? The fourth example I give you, it's going to be in the second video, I'm going to do an example where the center of dilation is not at zero, zero. Okay, so that's the one I, that's going to be a little bit different. But most of the time, our center of dilation on a graph is going to be considered to be 0, 0 automatically unless we tell you otherwise. All right, so let's take a look at the first example here. Okay, if you don't have graph paper, you need to get some graph paper. Okay, you can get it um, from me. If you, if you really don't have any at home, go ahead. You can watch the video if you want, kind of just follow along, but then I would recommend re-watching it when you have graph paper in front of you so that you can actually graph things. You can, if you don't have any at home, you have access to a printer at home, just go on uh, the internet, type into some search engine, printable graph paper, find a website that maybe has a PDF file or something like that that you can print. That's where I got mine because I didn't bring any graph paper home with me tonight. All right, so all right, here we go. We're going to transform triangle ABC with a scale factor of 2. Okay, a scale factor of 2. So K equals 2. These are our three points. So go ahead and pause the video and graph those three points. Get them on your graph. Draw your triangle. And while uh, you're doing that, remember you can pause the video if you need to. All right, because I'm going to keep moving here pretty quick. So 1, 3, 4, 4, and 2, 6. Alright, if you graph those correctly, this is what your graph should look like. So I got this on my graph paper. Alright, so we've got over 1, up 3, over to the right one because it was positive, up 3, B, 4, 4, and C's over 2 and up 6, right, 2 and up 6. Okay, scale factor of 2. What that means is that the distance from my center of my dilation to A and then when I do to the next point, the one A is going to become, I have to go twice as long. So the easiest way to do that for right now is just to count. Okay, I'm going to show you a shortcut though in video two that works as long as the center of the dilation is at zero, zero. Okay, but for now we're going to count. So right one, up two. So scale factor is two, so I have to double everything. So instead of right one and up two, or sorry, up three, my bad, right one and up three, okay, I'm going to go right two and up six. So right two, and up one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, puts me at the same exact spot as C. Okay, that's fine. All that means is that this point, originally called C, is also going to be the new point where A is. Now, what do we want to call that? In the book, sometimes they'll say something like this. Transform triangle ABC onto triangle DEF. 
Well, in that case, A was first, D was first, I would call it D. I didn't really tell you what to call the new triangle. So what I want you to do is use the prime marks. We did this before. So I want you to call this point right here A prime, okay? So that point right there is both C, it's the original C and it's the new A. Remember the prime mark means, the A means it's related to A, came from A, but prime means it's its own unique thing. I kind of talked about this like somebody who has the name of Junior, I talked about that in class. So if someone has the name of Junior, all right, we know they're related to somebody else, they came from someone else, all right, but they're their own unique person as well. Okay, so A prime says, hey, it's related to A, it came from A, but the prime mark tells me it's its own unique point. It's in a different place. All right, okay, let's go to B. So to get to B, I go right four and up four. Remember, a scale factor of two, so I double everything. So I gotta go eight and eight. So right eight and up eight. Okay, so let's count that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna put my dot there. I'm going to double check my counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we're good. Now, if that was B, what are we going to call this point up here? Okay, we're going to call it B prime. Okay, let's talk C, right? Two and up six. So, what do you think we should do? Scale factor of two. Right two up six. We got to double everything. So, right four and up 12. One, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to double check that real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 again. That was C, so I'm going to call this one up here C prime. Sorry, it went off the camera there for a second. All right, so now I have my three points, A prime, B prime, C prime graphed. I'm going to draw my triangle. And if I did this correctly, the new triangle should look what to the original triangle? it should look similar. Okay, if they don't look similar, I did something wrong. Okay, so here we go, A prime to B prime. Now another thing that should be true is that when I draw this A prime B prime segment, it should be parallel to the AB segment, and it should be twice as long because my scale factor is two. They look pretty parallel. I could check parallel by doing slope, Remember, rise over run, or we can do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And as long as those slopes reduce to the same thing, I'm fine. So let's check that real quick. Slope, rise over run. Rise of 1, run of 3. It's going up, so it's positive, so that's a slope of 1 third. All right, here, up 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right 6. So that's a slope of 2 sixths which reduces to 1 third. So this slope is 1 third, this slope is 1 third. They're definitely parallel. Good, tells me I'm doing something right. Okay, let's connect B prime to C prime. I'm not gonna bother checking the slope. I'm gonna take a quick look and see if it looks pretty parallel. It does, okay? So I'm not gonna do the counting though on that one just to save some time for right now. Let's connect C prime to C. And we have our new triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime. Does it look twice as big as the original? It should. Okay, every distance is twice as long. Keep in mind that if we drew the dotted lines, I'm gonna do this on another one, but if I drew the dotted lines to connect the vertices, it should lead back to my center. I'm just gonna show you how that would work on this by lining it up, B prime, B, and you'll notice it comes right through my origin. Okay, let's go with A prime and A. A prime and A and right through my origin if I were to actually connect it. Same thing up here, C prime with C, and right through my origin if I was to connect it. So this is making sense, zero, zero being the center of my dilation. Okay, the other thing I want you to be able to do is write those points down. So let's go back to this other sheet, A prime, B prime, and C prime. So A prime, remember, if we, if we look back where that was, it was over two to the right and up six, so that's the point two six. B was right 8 and up 8, so that's 8, 8. And C prime was right 4 and up 12. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's the end of video 1. Make sure you watch video 2 as well. I'm going to teach you a quick shortcut right at the beginning of the video. And then remember the fourth example. So I'm going to do a second, a third, and a fourth. The fourth example, we're going to have a center other than 0, 0. It does make it a little harder because we won't be able to use the shortcut. So make sure you watch both videos.